Afternoon, people. We've got a mystery beach today. Um, I'm just waiting for my mate to turn up. He's coming to pick me up, and he's taking me to a location. I think I mentioned it in the video before. Um, never been to the beach, not even for a day out. I've never, never been out there. Um, I'm going to keep it a secret because he said there could be some cool stuff. So he said, "Hold off, letting everyone know where it is. We're going to have a little look." He's been out there. Says it's all right. Says you can find some older things. So I'm up for that. Um, I'm going to take. I'm going to take the um, Equinox 800 mainly because it's charged and I forgot to charge the Explorer. I don't know how junky it is, it doesn't really matter because we've got the 11 inch coil on the Equinox. Uh, I don't want to start logging all my coils out there and end up just needing a small one. So, if we return, we will take a bigger coil on the Explorer, but for now, as it's charged, it's waterproof and I don't know what the weather's going to be like, It just I can just forget about having to worry about water on the machine. I think it might rain. Uh, other than that, I don't think anything is happening. So what I'm going to do, we are going to go off to the beach when he picks me up shortly. And uh, I'll see you on the beach. On probably the first fine, this will be the intro. And I'll, I'll catch you down there. It's really windy out here. You're going to have to put up with that. Because I've got to. My first find is a 303 round. Um, yep, that is what it is. I'm guessing there's going to be a fair bit of military or at least weaponry orientated finds, be it Second World War, First World War, or even older. And then who knows what else is out here? I have no idea. Well, just down there in that, it is horrible, claggy stuff to walk in and dig in, but. There we go, we've got a little bit older, a musket ball. A hefty one, that, that, that's a big old musket ball, that one. Happy. Right, we're jumping around the ages somewhat. We've got a triple ring, are they called a mini bullet? A mi no, a mini ball. French designer, Mr. Minet. I could be wrong. You can still see the rifling on that. That's quite cool, definitely hit something with a whack. Right, reading in at 27, we have a coin. Oh, I reckon that's going to be an old 10p. Okay. Oh, no! Ha, ha, ha! It's not an old 10p. I recognise that. It's a florin. I wear one of these on my finger. My silver ring is a florin. A George V. 1923 one florin. <laughs> well, this is the biggest piece of shrapnel I think I've found, except for the tip of a uh, 500 pound bomb. Size of that. Imagine that ripping through the air and then ripping through you. Still got the timer markings on it. Just give it a wash. You can still see the. Uh, Fuse timings around the edge. That was a, uh, a meaty old bomb, that one. Cool. Right, from down here, I've got another coin. I'm on a hot streak. What we got? I thought it was going to be a two, but no. 19, oh god, that's going to be a struggle, I'm going to say 23, George V, half penny, happy days, well I'm getting suitably covered in mud, I've had loads of these uh, triple ring, I'm sure they're called a mini bullet, or mini ball sorry, but we've got a coin, it is, where is it, there it is, don't know what it is yet, let's have a look. Oh, I reckon that is a sixpence. Oh, yes, it is a sixpence. Oh, look at that, lovely. That's going to be George the uh, sixth, I think. Nineteen forty-five. There he is, just about. Cool. Okay. 
can you see it? Now, I don't think I'm going to find any modern coins here. I think I'm only going to be finding pre-decimal. So I'm hoping... Uh oh. Oh no, I can just about... Oh, look at that. It's a Vicky. That is a Vicky, probably sixpence. Can you see her? Can you see her? Oh yeah, I can see. I can see some laurel leaves and... Oh, can we get a date? Uh... Well, if there's a date, I'll tell you at the end, or it will come up right now. Now, that looked like a ring to me, and I thought, right, that's it, done it. But I don't think it is. No. Uh, <clears throat> now, I can see a rifling. Could well be part of a 50 caliber bullet. Just to see rifling around the what's left of it, and then you've got the rim inside. I have to look that one up. So many bullets, but in amongst the bullets, we've got some coins to be had. All right, we've had a little break, and we got straight onto a coin. Coin in the hole, and that is a penny. Even I know that one. Should we see? Oh, I can see what it is. Just about to say, should we see who it is? George V. One penny. Oh, look at that, 1921, happy days. All right, we're back, we're back. This, um, it weren't a bad hunt, I've had a good, clean of it all. Uh, I've ditched I ditched the junk while um before I come home. Just because I was carrying a lot of bits of lead and stuff. And there wasn't much junk. There was no aluminium, there was no bottle tops, and the only bits of junk I had were a few like small brass screws. There were some copper rivets, um, an eyelet. It, there was just no junk. There was a lot of iron. You could hear the iron in the floor. I didn't dig the iron. But diggable junk as I call it. The stuff that you end up thinking, oh god, why did I bother? There really wasn't any. There was some mashed up lead. I mean you're going to be digging lead from digging bullets and musket balls as you'll see in a minute. Um, so all the lead's gone in the scrap pot and there wasn't, apart from smashed up bullets, I think I had two fishing weights, only small ones. Um, very weird. Yeah. An odd bit of beach. That's all I'm going to say, because we're going to head back there. I think we'll go out again as a... I'll go out with him again. Um, I might get out there on my own, but it is a bit of a way. It's not local, so... Um, it's not one I'm going to go to a lot, but... It's definitely, um, definitely worth the trip. And everything that I've kept... Is old. So, it's a bit of a winner. Right, what I'm going to do, I'll turn you around, and we'll have a look at what I've got. We were out about... Well, we're probably out about, I don't know, three hours. Some of that I spent, I walked as far as I could out and then walked all the way back in, just trying to gauge what's on the beach or what's on that bit of beach because you're trying to work out where things are lying in the sand. Sometimes things group together. Sometimes you have low spots. So a lot of the hunt today was working out what the beach is like and uh, where the best place to spend the majority of your time. I think in the last hour of that, two and a half, three hours, is when I found the coins. I kind of found the spot. But no, right, we'll have a look, we'll have a look, and then uh, I'll come round this video. It was only a short video, because um, I wasn't going to do any scenery shots to give away where we were. We just want to keep it, keep it to ourselves for a bit, because it could be a bit of a good beach. Um, we got, you know, Big old fat piece of bomb shrapnel, probably off of an anti-aircraft um, gun. Still see all the timer marks on it. And we've got these things. These aren't your normal bullets. Here's your normal, like, there's a double ring. You've got your pointy end and your concave base. There's another one that's hit something. Concave base was a pointy end. These ones are concave both ends. You can see the rifling around the edge still, where it's come out of the uh, 
musket. Uh, I was told these are possibly called rod cutters for a low velocity weapon. And I've got a feeling they make a bit, bit more of a mess when they hit. I'm not sure, but they're not very aerodynamic. Then you've got musket balls. I really should look up and see what kind of weapon could have fired something this big, opposed to something that big. I know the brown best musket, that fired some big bits of lead, but they weren't gauged in calibre, they were gauged in how many shots per, per kilo, I think, or pound, I can't remember. I think that's how they gauge muskets. Um, apart from some smashed up bullets, that was the only intact recent bullet I had. 303 round. I thought I had a ring. It wasn't to be. This I think is from a 50 cal. Again, you can see rifling around it, and that's just a bit of what's left. The coins. I'm quite impressed with these. We do have a yeah, George V penny, 1921. You see the date at the bottom. I cleaned up the sixpence. That's like the flooring. It didn't come up too bad. That's as much as I'm gonna do. I'm not going to do any more, I don't want to ruin it. Uh, 1922. Definitely happy with that one. Uh, 1923 half penny. You have to get it a bit wet to get the date off that. Uh, 1945. Just about make it out. George the Sixth, sixpence. And my favourite little coin, cleaned up quite well. I say favourite, I don't know if I like the florin or the sixpence. You can comment and tell me what you prefer. Uh, that is an 1878 Young Victoria sixpence. There she is. Yeah, happy. No modern coinage, no modern junk. And I really wasn't out there very long. But we will return, I don't know when. Might be in a couple of weeks, we'll have another go. And I might bring the bigger machine, bigger head. Right, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, it's a bit of a peculiar one, but it's a good one. And I will see you next time, I'm going to go and visit another mystery beach. Uh, I'm going to take myself off for the day, and uh, go on a bit of an adventure, find somewhere to go, and have a swing somewhere else. Right, cheers for watching, catch you later.